The proper selection of mode properties is critical when setting up mode sources and monitors in FDTD simulations. When designing photonic devices like directional couplers, mode converters, or mode demultiplexers, conducting a mode analysis is also an essential task. So in this tutorial, we will guide you through the process of using the mode solver feature to obtain field distributions and effective indices of guided waveguide modes. Let's begin by analyzing the modes of a silicon nitride waveguide that is 1.5 microns wide and 0.75 microns thick, with a refractive index of 2, just like this example. After creating this waveguide, set the simulation domain to 20 microns in the x direction, 5 microns in the y direction, and 5 microns in the z direction. Additionally, include a field monitor to visualize the fields propagating on the xy plane in the center of the waveguide. Then, adjust its wavelength to 1.55 microns. This waveguide has multiple guided modes with both transverse electric, or TE, and transverse magnetic, or TM, polarizations. Here you can see the first two TE and two TM guided modes. So as an example, let's add a mode source to inject the TM1 mode into the waveguide. Add a new source, name it Mode Source, and choose the Mode Source type. Adjust its X position to negative 9 microns, set its size to 0 in the X direction, and 5 microns in the Y and Z directions. Select the positive propagation direction. The num frequencies parameter accounts for the mode frequency dependency approximation. You can set it to 7 for broadband sources. Then adjust the wavelength range between 1.5 and 1.6 microns. When you click the Apply button, you will see the source plane positioned at the end of the waveguide. The Mode Index parameter defines which optical mode will be injected into the waveguide. As you will see later, the TM1 optical mode has the lowest effective index among those calculated by the mode solver, so set the Mode Index to 3. Now click on the Add Mode Solver command. A new mode solver will be added under the Studies tab. When you select Configuration, you can see that this solver is associated with the previously included mode source. Under Mode Specification, set the Num Modes to 4 and the Target NEF to 3.47. This means we are searching for the four waveguide modes with the highest effective indices. Sometimes you may need to limit the mode solver solutions to a specific polarization, which can be done using the Filter Pole selection list. In this example, leave it at the default value. The Frequencies panel is pre-filled with the mode source parameters, so you can simply confirm it by clicking the Apply button. Before running the mode solver, rename it to Mode Analysis or any other name you want. Then click on the Run command. The Solver Status window will appear. Once the simulation is complete, click Go to Post Run Results. The first plot you'll see is the electric field distribution of the TE0 waveguide mode. By cycling through the Mode Index selection list in ascending order, you will see the TM0, TE1, and finally the TM1 mode. Selecting the EZ field component, you can easily verify that this mode exhibits odd symmetry about the z-axis. If you select the Effective Index option, you'll find that this mode has an effective index of 1.55 at the center wavelength. Another important observation here is the decaying trend of all the effective index curves. To conclude this example, select and run the FDTD study. Wait a few seconds for the task to finish and navigate to the post-run results. There you can observe the TM1 mode being injected and propagating along the silicon nitride waveguide. A similar procedure can be employed to set up mode monitors at different locations within an electromagnetic device and acquire as much information as needed.